Uh, welcome to the St. Louis Park Construction Town Hall. My name is Nakongo Sigolo. I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for St. Louis Park. Uh, and this evening, I've got a couple of uh, staff here who will be uh, helping me with the presentation here. So I've got David Davis. Uh, he's going to be helping uh, uh, take the questions. So we're the way we set up here is you'd be able to um, send the questions via text and we'll see how many people show up. Maybe I might be able to see everybody. And then uh, when we get to the uh, questions part, part of the uh, of the meeting, and then we can call uh, everybody who would leak. So you could raise your hand. Uh, uh, um, on, on the application here, the way we know that. Hey, Nakongo, you're cutting in and out a little bit here. I'm wondering if, you, if your connection's maybe a little bit suspect. All right. It's off. Can you? Can you hear me better now? Oh, we could hear you okay. It was you. You were just cutting in and out. Your connection wasn't. Okay. You had a, you had a connection. Yeah, I hear you okay. Yeah, you sound better now though. So better connected. Maybe it was the microphone. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, we can hear you, Nikongo. Hey, we can hear you, yes. Nikongo. You hear me? Yep, it's perfect. You're fine. Good. All right. Fantastic. All righty. Um, although I'm having a hard time hearing folks here. All right. Sounds good. Well, uh, thank you again for joining us. Um, my name is Nakongo Sigolo, as I already uh, said at the beginning of the presentation here. Um, we've got a pretty full agenda tonight. Uh, just want to recognize that we've got Andy Collum on the meeting here. Andy is our resident engineer for a portion of the St. Louis Park alignment. Um, and uh, David Davis is my counterpart in the Minneapolis portion of the alignment. And then we've got uh, Meg McMoneygall with the city. Uh, she's in and she's listening in too. And uh, Sophia Guinness, she's the public involvement manager for the Southwest LRT project. Um, so we'll get going. Um, the format of the meeting would, you know, I'd like to go through uh, some slides here. So I've got a brief presentation. Uh, we'll be going over and and then we'd like to hold the questions towards the end that way it would allow um everybody to to speak so um all right so really that's uh, 2018 uh project groundbreaking as you can notice uh some faces here we've got the mayor uh, we've got also uh, some council members here and uh, city staff. That was back in 2018. So today's topics, we'll go over a quick project overview. We'll cover 2020 construction recap. We'll also go over... We'll also go over 2021 construction overview. All right, for a project overview, um, we've got the Southwest LRT project. Uh, many of you have probably uh, read about it, seen, seen it, or have been following it. Uh, basically, it is also referred to as the Green Line extension. It is the extension of the existing green line that runs between 
downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. Uh, 14 and a half mile of track, uh, 16 new stations. Uh, this will uh, provide a single trip uh, from Eden Prairie all the way to downtown St. Paul. So the Southwest LRT essentially is the extension of the existing south, the existing green line that runs between downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis, getting extended all the way to Eden Prairie. We'll be going over five uh, through five municipalities. Uh, we've got uh, five stations in Minneapolis, five stations in St. Louis Park and five stations, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, five stations in Minneapolis, three stations in Summers Park, three stations in Hopkins, one station and in Minnetonka, and then four stations in Eden Prairie. And the terminus of the alignment would be at the Southwest um, uh, station in Eden Prairie, Southwest Transit in Eden Prairie, if you're uh, familiar with that uh, location. So for, uh, uh, Project updates, 2020 was a very busy year. Um, we received the FFGA, the full funding grant agreement uh, on September 14th. Uh, construction uh, hit the 35% uh, completion mark. Um, we've got additional project elements under construction. I've got eight stations out of the 16 stations of the project. 23 bridges are underway or uh, completed out of 29. Uh, we've got five tunnels under, under oh, out of the eight uh, tunnels to be built on this project. And then 47% of retaining wall that has been completed. Um, so, uh, all of this just in uh, 2020 and uh, continuing on with additional uh, work that has been completed. Um, we had several conflicts, so more than 900 private utility conflicts, and 94% of that has already been completed. Uh, 60, sorry, 65% uh, of Utility, public utilities have also been completed. We have 15, we had 15 buildings to demolish on the project, and they've all been demolished. The fact uh, has been mobilized. Now the systems contract is the part of the project will be installing the overhead, communicate, overhead uh, power lines, uh, the communication systems, uh, get vending machines um, and also uh, security uh, components of the project of the uh, of the alignment. So that has mobilized during design and procurement. Uh, the Franklin Operations and Maintenance Facility will also be helping take some of the load off. Uh, I'm sorry, taking on some of the load for the SWLRT project. Uh, so it had to be retrofitted to accommodate uh, the SWLRT trains. So 40% of that work has also been completed. Uh, to date, up to date, the project has received, sorry, I'm gonna put my headset here. It looks like I'm not able to hear. Right. 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 Can folks hear me okay? okay. Seem to be echoing now. It's much better. If, every, much better. if everybody could mute themselves. Yeah, Nikongo, we can hear you fine. I think there are just a few, maybe a few people on phones too. That right. are, it looks like I'm having a little technical difficulty here. See if I could get that resolved. Everybody else needs to mute. Mute. Can you hear me okay? All right, sounds good. 
perfect. Um, we'll get going. I'll continue on um, with the project update. All right, I think that's about it for the project update. So we'll go into the 2020 construction recap. David, I'm, and for some reason, I'm not able to hear you, David, one second here. One moment, sorry about that. I'm trying to figure out the issues I'm having here. Can you hear me better now? Okay, I can hear you. Sorry, I had to undock my uh, station here. All right, uh, for the 2020 construction recap, it looks like. For the 2020 construction recap, uh, we're gonna get, I'm showing here a, a slide of the Sorry. All right. So I'm showing this. I'm showing a slide of the regional trail and uh, freight bridges at Minnehaha Creek. This has been completed. Uh, and at this location, you're looking east. Um, this is new freight track that was recently installed. Um, and freight uh, shift is going to occur in the next, uh, in the next construction, I'm sorry, in this construction season. And very soon here, as soon as it warms up, folks will, uh, will switch the freight to its new alignment. This is a Louisiana Avenue station, um, and this location here, you've got the, you know, you know it, this layout, this is the station layout, you know, north is up. Um, sorry about that, north is up. I'm gonna start towards the left of the screen here. You've got uh, yellow lines here, kind of over Louisiana Avenue. So these yellow lines are bridges. So we've got uh, two bridges. So that's the, we've got the most northern part is the uh, rail, it's the trail bridge, the Cedar Lake Trail Bridge that has been completed. Right. And then it's, uh, south of that, you've got the freight bridge, which has already been put in place. Further south, further south you've got the uh, LRT bridge, which is yet to be constructed, and um, Where's the in, Where's in green here, you see a solid green line that comes towards the further so one down second, here. And, if uh, so folks Louisiana, could just remember uh, to mute themselves, I think it's getting hard to hear, so if you could put mute if you're not on mute. Thank you. So further down at this station, at this location here, you'll see in light green, that's the Louisiana Avenue station. Um, that's where the station is going to, to be. And uh, in red, that's the trail underpass. Uh, there is a connection between the Cedar Lake Trail, goes underneath the track, the freight track, um, and then connects up with the station. Um, at this location, there will be a uh, park and ride, 350 stalls. Um, 
just to give you a sense of direction here, a little bit to the north here, north western quadrant here, that's the former Sam's Club, and uh, continuing south of, on Louisiana would be the hospital uh, further south down the page here. Uh, you'll see some yellow uh, band type um, structures. Those are uh, bridges. So that's the um, southerly connector, which essentially is a new connection that the project is building to connect up the Bass Lake Spur, which runs east-west, to the MNNS Spur, which runs north-south. And that connection would happen further south, uh, just beyond, kind of beyond the page here. And uh, this to uh, kind of rebuild a connection that, was, that has been lost or will be lost as, uh, as part of the project here, which was a why that served the businesses on this side here. And you know they received freight deliveries. Now the southerly connector will uh, allow them to continue to uh, receive deliveries. Um, so that's uh, really about uh, all about this uh, station layout. Um, this is a rendering of the same Louisiana Avenue station. You'll see the trains up up the top there. There's a great separation. This the LRT station is uh, a little bit down here. Uh, you know, a little hidden by the trees here, but uh, that's the Louisiana station tr uh, tracks will be running on either sides of uh, of the that, that station platform, um, and you're looking you're looking west uh, on this on this rendering. All right, uh, this is the original trail uh, and freight bridges at Louisiana Avenue. These are the two bridges that I mentioned in uh, early on on the station layout. Uh, first one here, so you're looking. You're looking west on this photo here. Uh, the first one here is the is the uh, freight bridge that a new freight bridge that has been built, and then following that towards the left is the Cedar uh, original trail bridge, and those two are in place already. Um, we still have, obviously, you know the. Uh, freight bridge to build, which will be further south, and south would be to the to the left. Just to point so the I think we're going backwards, that's the trail we're looking at, right? This tr right, that is correct. Sorry, thanks for the correction, Andy. So this is the this is a trail, and then the freight is on the other side. So the trail underpass at Louisiana, the construction at this location had already started. Um, and uh, the opening in this wall here is the actually opening to the, the trail underpass. It goes underneath uh, the uh, freight, freight uh, uh, alignment here. Uh, this construction had already started in 2020. Additional finishing work uh, will continue at this location. Uh, if you could look further towards the looking, you're looking east. There's a structure there, kind of in the air. That's the MNNS spur. That's the uh, freight alignment that um, the southerly connector will be connecting to further south. Uh, this is a, a bridge abutment for the southerly connector. This one had already been built. Additional work uh, is yet to be uh, completed for this uh, piece here to be uh, done. Um, it's the Woodhill Avenue station um, layout. A uh, few things I'd like to point out here in solid green here, light, uh, light green, I'm sorry, dark green is the LRT alignment. We've got PEDS improvements on either side of Wooddale. In red, kind of tucked underneath the roadway there is the trail underpass. So the trail underpass has already been built. Uh, it took a little, uh, a little while to get that in. Um, and you know we worked with the city to uh, organize the maintenance of traffic and that kind of thing. So uh, the roadway was closed for some time. And uh, thankfully, that has been completed. In addition, 
would have two signals that would be uh, added uh, along um, Woodale and also some additional bed improvements south of the station, a walkway that would lead to Yosemite um, where a bus drop off would be also built. So that would provide uh, a way for buses to drop off passengers because obviously this area is, uh, is you know, very, it's got very limited space, you know, no, nowhere to build a park and ride. And uh, we worked with the city to be able to allow for that drop off to be uh, put in the project. So this is a rendering of that uh, um, Woodale station. So you could recognize the Nash Frame building. You're looking toward, toward, to the east, uh, station platform, tracks on either side of the platforms, and then you've got the freight uh, on the north side here. So that's the freight uh, alignment on the north side. So those are the tracks. And then further north is the entrance to the uh, Woodell Trail underpass. So the original trail is going to run underneath the roadway uh, at, at Woodell. So this is it in, in photo. So this is the Woodell underpass as the entrance. And uh, this location, you're looking towards the east. Um, uh, trunk Highway 100, this is a freight bridge, and now I'm just going to pause a little bit here and just uh, uh, mention that um, most of the freight alignment uh, is going to be built on the south side of the corridor. Um, so in order to do that, we had to uh, realign freight and shift freight just a little bit to the north so that uh, freight could give way to LRT to be built on the south side. So that uh, has been done and this is a bridge, uh, an existing freight bridge that was shifted. So the uh, south, south side is ahead and the north side is towards us. So uh, the freight, the, the bridge will be Moving towards us, uh, which is the north side. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that we were able to uh, videotape that. So I'm gonna show how that was done. So that's that's the freight yeah. bridge being shifted to the north side in order to uh, give way for the LRT to be built on existing. Uh, abutment and uh, and freight uh, or formerly freight piers. This is above Highway 100. Sorry, I'm gonna move away from that. Okay, so well, then we go to Beltline Boulevard. Uh, so Beltline, we've got a several things happening at Beltline. Um, and I'm just going to start with the roadway here, some roadway improvements. Uh, in dark green is the freight, I'm sorry, the LRT alignment station in light green. In yellow, that's a uh, Cedar Lake, uh, South Cedar Lake pedestrian bridge. We're able to work with uh, um, three, three Rivers and the city of St. Louis Park to get this in. So it's quite a long bridge that goes over the roadway. It goes over uh, freight and over LRT. And then it drops on the, to the south side here and continues on with a trail uh, along this uh, corridor. Um, I wanna point out the uh, park and ride uh, on the north western quadrant here. This will house about 268 parking stalls. Um, and then on the north side, uh, the between Beltline Boulevard, which is you know to the uh, west here, all the way to Lynn, which is to the right, uh, this frontage road along um, Highway Seven or you know County Road Twenty Five will go away as part of this project. So uh, the city's got some additional pet improvements that they're working on. 
uh, in this area. However, the traffic from that, uh, I can call former frontage road, would be moved to the baggage road, which would be a new roadway. Uh, I would like to look at it as the extension of the existing Lean Avenue that runs south and then would run east, uh, east and west. So that would provide access to the park and ride and then to the station. Um, additional uh, pedestrian improvements at this location. There will be a right end from the, uh, County Road 25 onto Monterey, uh, which is the roadway between uh, Beltline and uh, Lane Avenue, and then some additional improvements at Lane, uh, where a new signal would be installed at Lane and County Road 25. Uh, the uh, frontage road would be cul de sac at just uh, east of Lane, uh, kind of where those uh, there's an apartment complex. Uh, apartment complex. I'm sorry, at this location, that's where the frontage road will uh, essentially end as part of this project. So those are the modifications that uh, the project will bring to this uh, area. Um, this is a rendering of that uh, uh, station, Beltline Boulevard station. You're looking towards the east. Uh, and you could see a uh, truss over, it goes over freight and LRT. Uh, further towards the left there, that's where that uh, bridge truss is located. And I'm pointing that out because I'll be showing that in a subsequent uh, slide here. So this is the trust that I, I have uh, referred to. Uh, this happened uh, early uh, this year uh, when crews uh, installed the uh, bridge truss over freight. And this is a part of the uh, original trail bridge. So uh, quickly run into a, a 2021 construction overview. Um, so what it really what to expect in 2021 as far as construction activities. So uh, obviously there's a freight that still needs to be realigned. Um, freight alignment that took place uh, last year covered the section between the Minneapolis border, Minneapolis and West Park border, and just uh, west of Wooddale. Um, now, the additional shift that is going to occur almost immediately uh, as soon as it starts to warm up here is the shift of the freight alignment west of Wooddale all the way to Blake. So that is part of the work that will be completed in 2021. Um, at the Minnehaha Creek, uh, the freight is still running on its uh, existing bridge. That bridge will also go away once the shift has been completed. Um, and then we'll begin uh, uh, building the LRT bridge uh, foundation at uh, over, over um, I'm sorry, at the creek, at the Minnehaha Creek. Um, Louisiana Avenue station area, we've got a few things happening at this location. Uh, we still have the uh, freight uh, bridge that is uh, need, still needs to be demolished, and this will uh, actually require the closure um, of the roadway. Where we're working with the city to uh, to get into the details of the closure and the and the length. We'll work with um, uh, neighboring property owners and inform them when this uh, closure is going to happen, so they could plan ahead. Um, so then we'll begin LRT bridge foundations at. Uh, Louisiana as well, and we've got some soil corrections at uh, Louisiana Station, so that will be a lot of uh, hauling that will occur at that location, and then we'll continue retaining wall work. Um, uh, Woodale Avenue Station area will install um, some signals, uh, freight bungalow, um, and then we'll begin station work at Woodale as well. Uh, over Trunk, uh, Trunk Highway 100 uh, will complete the LRT bridge deck. That will be a prefabricated bridge uh, that will be uh, dropped in the location where freight used to run. Uh, and then we'll also do some abutment work as well. 
Um, this will require, however, a uh, short-term uh, closure of the, of the highway. At Beltline Boulevard for this year, uh, we'll start uh, station work. We'll complete the pad bridge, uh, which uh, has already uh, started and died uh, far along in construction. Uh, we'll also uh, begin some roadway work uh, north of the station. This is the uh, extension of Lane Avenue, as we're calling it the Lane Avenue extension or the Bikage Road. So you'll see activities for that uh, uh, well, roadway uh, getting kicked off uh, this, this season. Uh, and in addition to that, we'll also have some uh, retaining wall work at that location as well. Um, I've got a I've got a map here that kind of uh, highlights the various activities that will be occurring as part of the 2021 construction. Uh, so we've got you know a legend uh, key here at the at the bottom of the of the of the map. Uh, it shows various activities, some pile driving, uh, which is you know the loudest uh, part of the uh, activities of you know this uh, project. So there's a uh, diamond shape um, uh, uh, shape uh, here that is pointed at uh, the creek. So we'll be pile driving at the creek. We'll also be uh, pile driving by uh, Louisiana when uh, when we start building um, or when we start demoing the bridge. We we'll have to install some uh, uh, supportive excavation. Um, sheeting which you know will will be loud banging banging to the ground and also some additional piling for some retaining wall and uh, uh southerly connector and also at uh, beltline we're also expecting uh pile driving it will be a very short moment at beltline we have one one retaining wall which will not take very long to to get in so um, and then you see diamond shape in yellow here. Those just show additional building activities would be station activities, um, additional earth moving activities. Uh, and then we're featuring uh, essentially the highlights that are covered you know on this map. So this is a good a good piece to to have handy. It shows uh, some, uh, sh short term roadway closures at uh, Highway 100. Um, and then it shows uh, some pedestrian underpass construction, uh, roadway impacts to uh, demolish the old freight bridge. So this would be, you know, obviously uh, a closure. The details of that is being finalized. Um, and then uh, trail and freight bridge construction at this location. So uh, at Louisiana, towards Louisiana here. So that um and then um you know we've got a 24-hour construction hotline uh and the number is listed you know this is really the best way to get a hold of us uh this is monitored um by a human being so uh, every time you call you'll be able to speak to somebody live that will uh funnel that information to us uh, based on the urgency of the call and someone will be getting back to to you. Um, my email address is listed here as well and my phone number is also listed. Um, there are other ways to uh, stay connected. Uh, we've got a website, uh, swlrt.org, got additional information on the website. We have uh, construction updates posted on the website. You could also sign up to receive our construction updates. They're sent out uh, every uh, on a weekly basis. Every Friday, we send them out. Uh, we've got a mailing list um, of uh, well over 16,000 uh, emails and uh, contact info, I should say, as we also send out text messages if one would prefer to receive text messages over email. Um, the project is on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, and Instagram as well. Um, so that's uh, really it uh, as far as the uh, 
the presentation is concerned. With that, I'd like to see if we could get into the questions part of the of the project. I have four questions. Okay. Sure. Um, go ahead, Jim. Is that Jim? Jim, okay, okay, if you're waiting for me, um, you said you had 11 vehicles delivered. <clears throat> what are the total number of vehicles? There's uh, 31 vehicles, am I correct, Andy? We're expecting 31 vehicles, 11 have been delivered, so we'll still have uh, 20 yet. Okay, to be. all right. Secondly, I know that we bought a bunch of property in Hopkins for the O&M facility. Are we still using that property or are we going to Franklin? Uh, we are using that prop, uh, the uh, former uh, operation maintenance facility that will house a, a rail support facility um, and also some additional parking. Oh, okay. All right. And thirdly, <clears throat> we obtained a lot from the developer at the southeast corner a belt line and the tracks. Now I see we're putting a parking lot on the northeast corner of Highway 7 and the tracks. What happened to the lot that we got from Paul Clute? South of the tracks? South of the tracks and east of belt line. Um, I believe that's a Hennepin well, County property. But, that is correct, yes. That that is a Hennepin County property. It's not a part of the of the project. During during the initial um, uh, project development, uh, you know, we're looking at, at that property, but then that interest had gone away, so we never purchased it. Okay, and then this isn't part of St. Louis Park, but what's happening in the some of the issues in Minneapolis? Um, Right, so um, there are issues in Minneapolis, that is correct. Um, there is a corridor protection barrier that needs to be to be built. Uh, it wasn't included in the bid documents when uh, the project went out for bids. Um, so it, you know, it has to be added as a change order. Um, and then uh, the design of that has been completed. So this is about the time, you know, to get that added. Uh, and then in addition to that, there is also uh, a tunnel, uh, Kenilworth, uh, Kenilworth tunnel that is being built um, in Minneapolis. We've got, we, you know, we had some, we encountered some issues um, when we were driving in uh, sheeting for that uh, section for a certain section of that uh, tunnel. So where, you know, the project has uh, identified a different method uh, that would allow uh, for added safety. So uh, basically with the way folks were driving in sheets, we noticed that uh, there were some settlements. So um, near certain properties uh, along that uh, uh, corridor. So. We're, we're doing what is called the secant wall um, as added layer of protection to protect those buildings that are abutting the, the, the corridor. And that is also being finalized. The cost of that is also being finalized. So we're still working through some details that um, you know, we'll come back and uh, share with the community, but we know that uh, those two elements are delaying the construction of the uh, overall uh, project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, all right. Um, all right. Any any other questions? Looks like there's questions in the chat. All right. So I see here that um, I'm going to start 
at the bottom here, roadway belt line are breaking down despite new pavement for months ago. Will that continue to be up to date? Also, how is traffic flow going to be dealt with as with just a basic train car back into seven and 25 already? Um, so we've, uh, we've improved as part of the project, some of the, uh, uh, the roadway uh, along Beltline Boulevard. Um, we still have a little bit of work uh, to get the, the, the LRT alignment through there. Um, and then we'll continue to be, and then uh, traffic wise where, so the you know, vehicular traffic is going to do the same thing as they're currently doing, meaning that uh, vehicles will will stop when the train goes by. So the gate arms will go down and um, and then, you know, once the train has cleared the intersection, then, um, you know, uh, vehicular traffic would be able to proceed. Um, now, you know, the LRT trains, you know, from the time that, you know, the arms goes uh, down, um, the time the train comes, arms go down and then back up, it's about uh, uh, 45-ish seconds, you know, for that to, for the train to get through there. So uh, obviously it's different, you know, different compared to, uh, to freight. Okay. Um, so when will, so this one question here, when will the Woodale 7 ramps traffic signal uh, be put in full use? They've been flashing for a couple of months now. Uh, we're anticipating that would be would be done. Andy, we're we're working to get this done in in the, sometime in Aprilish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. If, um, I would say April necessarily. We with the new freight crossing there. Uh, there's there's some additional uh, signal bungalows that need to be delivered and installed before those those can go live. Um, basically, waiting for weather and delivery of the of that bungalow to get it installed, and then uh, shortly after that, uh, that hopefully that intersection, those lights go live. Uh, that is scheduled to be delivered this this spring, March April timeframe. All right. Thank you, Andy. Um, the there's another question here. Is there a schedule for when the closed multi-use green line trail might open? Um, obviously the, uh, the trail has been effect, uh, impacted by the construction. Now with the delay, we're expecting that, you know, it might, uh, it will impact uh, the opening time. We're still working through the details of, um, of when the uh, trails would open, um, and you know that information is is yet to be uh, to be uh, published here. So we'll we'll be sharing that in in the upcoming communications. Would like you know would suggest uh, that uh, folks sign up to receive our construction updates uh, when that information is available. It will be going via the uh, construction updates. So another question here: Is there an estimate of uh, the out-of-pocket cost, revenue, and loan interest for every day of delay. Um, that, uh, that's something we'd uh, really have to take home and do a little bit of homework on it and, uh, and report back. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll take that down and we can respond. Now, I, uh, this is from Tom, and I, I don't know if Tom is still on the line here. Uh, But we'll, yeah, yeah. You know, would, um, the easiest would probably be to uh, post a response onto, the, onto our, our website. So the, the meeting is recorded and it's going to be posted online. We'll also post some uh, follow-up uh, uh, responses. Very good, thank you. All right, thank you. 
then I uh, another question here is I understand there was an, an unexpected complication due to soil issues which may delay the startup of the extension. Do you have any idea on the number of months of the delay? I think I touched base on this a little bit um, as part of the two Minneapolis elements that are delaying the project. Uh, we're still working uh, out the details of um, you know the cost and also the uh, schedule and how it's going to impact opening day. So that is yet to come. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, please continue to follow us, and you'll you know we'll, you know we'll we'll make that available as soon as it's been figured out. Uh, additional question here, uh, looks like this is from Roger, uh, construction proceeding on schedule completion 2023. I think we've covered that, the 2023 opening uh, is uh, going to be pushed. Um, we don't know when, but um, that information is going to be made available. And uh, I think I've uh, covered uh, James' questions. Um, and then a question here, I can hear you fine. I was having some technical difficulties. I apologize for that. All right. Um, that's about it that I have on, on the chat feed here. Um, with that, I'm just going to open it up and see if uh, there are any additional questions. Anybody? Nice day. Good night. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Thank you.